In our study of the gospel according to John, we will examine John chapter 1 from verse 50 to 51. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Verily, verily, most assuredly, I say to you, Hereafter, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. That I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering that I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for. When Nathanael's eyes were open to the reality that he was in the presence of the Lord from heaven, the Messiah, the proclaimed coming King of heaven, the proclaimed coming King of Israel, Nathanael exclaims in amazement and wonder at his discovery and he says, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Nathanael was congratulated by the Lord of being an Israelite indeed, who had no guile, no deceit in him. The Lord told him, while you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Remember, that the fig tree symbolizes the house or the home. So the Lord says to him, while you were in your home, while you were in the quietness of your heart, thinking about the times and the promise of everlasting redemption to Israel, I saw you, I was there. But the Lord is now saying, do you believe because I told you that I saw you? Do you believe because I told you of my wonder? Do you come to the light of the knowledge of my glory because of the revelation of yourself and myself that I have provided? You have not seen anything yet. Isaiah chapter 64 from verse 4. From ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God but you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. The Lord said to Nathanael, you will see greater things than this. Jesus' earthly miracles are signs of his redemptive power and work. The miracles are to be appreciated, not merely for themselves, but for the redemptive realities that they promise Greater things than his earthly miracles and wonders is the work of salvation and reconciliation that is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. He has become a sanctuary, a resting place for God, a bridge between heaven and earth. Man can now approach God because the Lamb of the world, the monogenes, the King of Israel, the Son of Man, Yahshua HaMashiach, is the Son of God. He is God. Psalms 31 verse 19, How great is your goodness which you have laid up for those who fear you and bestowed on those who take refuge in you in the sight of the sons of men. Jesus is saying to Nathanael, you shall see greater things than the miracles and the wonders. You shall see my goodness, 
when we come into the redemptive light of Jesus, when he makes us a sanctuary, a dwelling place for God, we sing, I have seen the Lord's goodness, his mercies and compassion. Oh Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh Lord, you are excellent in my life every day. After speaking to Nathaniel, Jesus now says to those present, Verily, verily, I say to you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus prefixes his proclamation by saying, Verily, verily, they represent in a duplicated form the Hebrew Amen, which is common in the Old Testament as an adverb. They are always spoken by the Lord. In Revelation chapter 3 from verse 14, it says, To the angel of the church in Laodicea, write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the originator of God's creation. So Amen is the name given to the faithful witness. The repetition of the word involves a powerful declaration that is made to overcome any rising doubt and vanquish any possible objection. When Jesus says, I say unto you, this takes the place of thus saith the Lord that will be spoken by the ancient prophets of Israel when they speak on the behalf of God. But now God himself is speaking. So he says, I say to you, he speaks in the fullness of conscious authority with the certain knowledge that he is now making a divine revelation. He knows that what he says is true because his word is truth. In Genesis chapter 28 from verse 12 to 13, and Jacob dreamed about a ladder that rested on the earth with its top reaching up to heaven. And God's angels were going up and down the ladder. When Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man, he is alluding to Jacob's vision of a ladder stretching from earth to heaven, on which the angels ascended to worship God and descended to do his bidding on earth. In Genesis chapter 28 from verse 16 to 17, when Jacob woke up, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. I was unaware of it. And he was afraid. And he said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. As Jacob slept, his resting place became a temple a house of God, better the sanctuary, the resting place of God. Jesus now explains the full depth of the experience of Jacob, the supplanter, before the change of his name to Israel, a prince with God. Jesus himself is the reality to which the stairway pointed. In a dream, Jacob saw the reunion of heaven and earth. Christ is the end time sanctuary in which God communes with his people. He has become the temple of God. Psalms chapter 68 verse 13 ascribe the power to God whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. O oh God, you are awesome in your sanctuary. The God of Israel himself gives strength and power to his people, blessed be God. In Christ alone, sola Christus, we also have now become a sanctuary for our God. Revelation chapter 21 from verse 3, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. The tabernacle of God is with man. And he will live with them. 
They will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. Nathanael's eyes has been opened to behold the sublime spiritual reality of what he has been brought into. That heaven, the abode of blessedness and righteousness, the throne of God, has been opened behind him and around him. The dream of Jacob, the union between heaven and earth, between God and man, which dawned like a vision of a better time upon the old patriarchal life. That dream of a troubled night is now the constant experience of the disciples of the Lord. The free access to the heart of the Father and to the center of all authority in heaven and earth is open to those who belong to him. He, the Son of Man, is now on earth to commence his ministry of reconciliation, to make a sanctuary for God in the hearts of the rebels. When we pray, we sing, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. As he makes us a sanctuary, a resting place for God, he says he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the former things have passed away and the one seated on the throne says, Behold, I make all things new. These words are faithful and true. It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give freely from the spring of the water of life. How awesome is this place. The vision of open heavens. Not a dream, but a constant reality. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Wow. Allow me to pray as we close. As I come into your presence, past the gates of praise, into your sanctuary, Till we are standing face to face. I look upon your countenance. I see the fullness of your grace. And I can only bow down and say, You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of all praise. To you, our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. That I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended